What is the future of 3D printing? People are talking about it's going to transform architecture. It's going to solve housing crisis issues. It's on the cusp of a revolution. I see more people talking about 3D printing than actually doing it. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete freak and I'm here for you, my crazies. Why am I talking about 3D printing? Well, for the last five years or so, I've built four different concrete printers. We've worked on a team to create more than 100 concrete mixtures. We've designed structures. I've 3D printed a building, of course, with my team. Go team. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, amazing building. What did I learn from the, all of these efforts? 3D printing is inevitable. It's coming. Get ready or get run over. I've talked about it before in this video. It was a couple years ago, though. And truly, I think this is going to be a game changer. But when is it going to happen? And what will it look like? Well, why do I think this? Why do I think that this is going to be such an inevitable thing? What if I could make you a concrete structure that was fireproof, that was insect-proof, that could be designed for tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, any combination you want? What if I could make a structure that was minimal maintenance and that will outlive you? And what if I could do all of this for a lower amount of cost and time that is the promise of 3D printing. Now, how much cheaper is it gonna be? I don't think anyone knows right now, all right? But if I ballparked a number, and I think this is a conservative number, what if you could reduce your mortgage or your rent by about 25%? Wouldn't that be awesome? Couldn't you find other cool, amazing things to do with that extra money? I bet you could. That is what people are talking about. That is the goal of 3D printing. But what are the benefits? How is 3D printing able to do this and make this happen? Number one, you can build concrete structures faster and easier. What am I talking about? Well, with typical concrete construction, it looks something like this. First, you have to tie rebar. Then you have to set up these big forms, usually using a crane to do it. Then you have to pour concrete, consolidate it. Then you have to remove the forms from the outside and then you pray. What? Pray? Yeah, you pray that you consolidated the concrete well, because if not, it looks like this and you've got to fix it. Ugh. So in typical concrete structure, you tie the rebar, you set the formwork, you place the concrete, you wait three or four days or so, then you take the forms off, then you fix any problems that you didn't get when you were constructing in the first place. A lot of steps, right? And that's one reason why people don't do a lot of concrete construction now in a lot of different applications or why they don't do it more. But what's a typical 3D printed structure do or, or look like? Well, you use equipment like this and it makes walls that look something like this, but truly you use mortar and what you print with the mortar are cavities. See how they're empty in the middle? Yep, it's kind of like formwork. And inside those formwork, you put rebar. Look at that. There's rebar being placed in the holes and those cavities, and then you pour concrete in around that rebar, and that's the real structure. The other stuff around the other mortar is just kind of like non-structural stuff, right? Or formwork. So in a typical 3D printed structure, you print the mortar formwork, then you place rebar, and then you place concrete, and then you got yourself finally a structure. Now let's talk about the next generation 3D printed structures. Now this is the latest and greatest stuff that's just rolling off the presses. That's where you tie rebar, and then you print concrete around the rebar. And it looks something like this. It's pretty amazing, right? So the next generation 3D printed structures, they're, they're much different. They're tying rebar, placing concrete around the rebar, and then if there's any problems, you can fix it because the concrete is still wet. That's pretty cool, right? So number two, 3D printed concrete uses minimal formwork. And why is that such a big deal? Because formwork is about 50% of the overall cost of your concrete structure. That's awesome. And you, this saves time, saves labor, saves materials, really, really big game changer. Now, you can also usually construct 3D print structures with a lot less equipment. Like here is a massive two-story building here, and they use this gantry printer to do the whole thing. I mean, there's a pump and a mixer hooked up to it as well, but that's pretty cool that you can do it with one piece of equipment.
But we can also use this in, in remote areas or rural areas where there's not a lot of other um, um, equipment around. Now, supposedly we can use less people and it's going to be less expensive. Now, I put question marks near these though because I'm not sure we're using less people yet and I'm not sure it's less expensive yet, but I think it will be. I think it will be given enough time. But I do think there will be a 3D printing um, revolution in the concrete industry, and I think it's just a matter of time. But so what in the heck is holding it back? Well, number one, most of the mixes that people are using for 3D printing are using mortar. What? Mortar. That's cement and water and sand all mixed together. It's the thing that goes between bricks. Yeah, that's mortar. The whole structure is made out of that stuff. Okay, and there's some challenges with mortar. There, it's costly, it cracks more, it's not as durable as concrete, it's not as sustainable as concrete. There's a lot of reasons why mortar, I think, is going to have problems long term. Most 3D printed mixes also are delivered in sacks and then mixed on site. What am I talking about? Well, you have a sack of stuff, you dump it into this hopper, you add water to it, and it mixes it up. That hopper then dumps it into a pump like this, and then that pump sends it on to the printer where it comes out looking like mortar like this. See? No rocks in that thing. That is mortar, specialized mortar that came from sacks. Most people want to order ready-mix concrete. They want to call someone on the phone call, call, that makes concrete all day and have the concrete show up at their site, and they can't do that right now with most with most 3D printers, but the next generation printers, they can use ready-mix concrete. So pay attention to them. They are gonna be pretty cool. Engineers also, they want structures with rebar inside of them. Okay, that's that's kind of a, that's kind of important, kind of a very important for a lot of engineers. Now, why is that? Well, concrete is weak in tension, and it is the rebar's job to hold it together. So we see something like this. No, wow, <laughs> sadsies, right? It's we needed some rebar or some reinforcement across that to keep that crack small. But rebar, what it does is it carries the load after the concrete cracks, and it's lots and lots of area in one spot. And it, that's that's pretty cool. That can be useful sometimes. People have to say, oh, okay, I'm going to use fibers in my 3D printed concrete instead. I love fibers. Big fan of fibers. But fibers are like small reinforcement in lots and lots and lots of different spots. So shown here on the left with that crack, I've got a rebar going across it, or I've got a lot of different fibers going across it. Now, they both can work sometimes, but if I have an, a, 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 a big extreme event, I'm going to want rebar. If you don't know what I'm talking about, extreme events like a tornado or or a hurricane or like somebody, a vehicle hitting my structure. And, and what that's all about is like, if I were going to hang from a cliff, would I want to hang from a rebar, the one on the left, or would I want to hang from a bunch of fibers? So here is cliffhanger here hanging on and, and cliffhanger is going to want um, the rebar, right? That's going to be much safer. And that's why engineers prefer rebar because they're much, much, much better in extreme events, much more ductility, much more strength much better able to predict how things are gonna perform. And most 3D printed structures right now actually don't meet current building codes. I don't know if you know that or not. And people are trying to modify or tweak the building codes to allow um, um, 3D printed structures to actually work, which I think is okay. But this next generation 3D printing, it meets existing building codes. So those problems are gonna go away really, really, really fast. And some people just don't like how 3D printing looks. And I, I get that, you know, maybe that weirds you out when it looks like this, but you can just put, you know, um, um, a skim coat on the outside. That's just a mortar layer um, that, you, that you put on, on the outside of your actual structures. And then it looks pretty good after that. So in summary, what do we need? We need to share successes about 3D printing and we need to share challenges. Now I've tried to point out the good things and the bad things in this video today. And of course, we need to promote innovations and talk about inno innovations and I'll talk about more of those coming up in future videos. And we gotta chair and support those that are trying. Now I hear lots and lots of people that like to say bad things about 3D printing. I think they probably like to say bad things about lots of different stuff and, and, and I guess it. I understand it's different than what you're used to, but 3D printing is like this, this new thing that's coming, that's doing its best, It's and, and it's trying to change the world. It's trying to make things better, and it's kind of like making fun of a kid for trying to learn how to tie their shoes. Would you do that? I wouldn't do that. So 
Don't be a hater, all right? Seriously now, don't be a hater. But some version of 3D printing is gonna change the concrete industry. Now, I, I, if you've got input, then give it. Make this stuff better. But, and seriously, we're gonna need every single tool out there that we can get to help make our concrete better and make it happen. And the next generation of 3D printers is going to be a big leap. And my next video is actually going to be about the BAM printer. That's the printer we developed at Oklahoma State. And I'll tell you all about it and how it works. And I've got a little clip of it at the end of the video that you can see it in action. And so, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Check me out on the book and the gram. Take care, my concrete lovelies. Can't wait to see you next time. Peace.